Whatever may be said in praise of poverty, the fact remains that it is not possible to live a really complete or successful life unless one is rich. No man can rise to his greatest possible height in talent or soul development unless he has plenty of money, for to unfold the soul and to develop talent he must have many things to use, and he cannot have these things unless he has money to buy them with. Man develops in mind, soul and body by making use of things, and society is, so organized that man must have money in order to become the possessor of things, therefore, the basis of all advancement for man must be the science of getting rich. The object of all life is development, and everything that lives has an inalienable right to all the development it is capable of attaining. Man's right to life means his right to have the free and unrestricted use of all the things which may be necessary to his fullest mental, spiritual and physical unfoldment, or, in other words, his right to be rich. No man ought to be satisfied with a little if he is capable of using and enjoying more. The purpose of nature is the advancement and unfoldment of life, and every man should have all that can contribute to the power, elegance, beauty and richness of life, to be content with less is sinful. The man who owns all he wants for the living of all the life he is capable of living is rich, and no man who has not plenty of money can have all he wants. Life has advanced so far, and become so complex, that even the most ordinary man or woman requires a great amount of wealth in order to live in a manner that even approaches completeness. Every person naturally wants to become all that he is capable of becoming, this desire to realize innate possibilities is inherent in human nature we cannot help wanting to be all that we can be. Success in life is becoming what you want to be, you can become what you want to be only by making use of things, and you can have the free use of things only as you become rich enough to buy them. To understand the science of getting rich is therefore the most essential of all knowledge. No man ought to be satisfied with a little if he is capable of using and enjoying more. The purpose of nature is the advancement and unfoldment of life and every man should have all that can contribute to the power, elegance, beauty and richness of life, to be content with less is sinful. The man who owns all he wants for the living of all the life he is capable of living is rich, and no man who has not plenty of money can have all he wants. Life has advanced so far, and become so complex, that even the most ordinary man or woman requires a great amount of wealth in order to live in a manner that even approaches completeness. Every person naturally wants to become all that he is capable of becoming, this desire to realize innate possibilities is inherent in human nature, we cannot help wanting to be all that we can be. Success in life is becoming what you want to be, you can become what you want to be only by making use of things, and you can have the free use of things only as you become rich enough to buy them. To understand the science of getting rich is therefore the most essential of all knowledge. We are all acquainted with the loathsome consequences of living or the body and denying both mind and soul, and we see that real life means the complete expression of all that man can give forth through body, mind, and soul. Whatever he may say, no man can be really happy or satisfied unless his body is living fully in every function, and unless the same is true of his mind and his soul, wherever there is unexpressed possibility or function not performed, there is unsatisfied desire. Desire is possibility seeking expert. Man cannot live fully in body without good food, comfortable clothing, and warm shelter, and without freedom from excessive toil. Rest and recreation are also necessary to his physical life. He cannot live fully in mind without books and time to study them, without opportunity for travel and observation, or without intellectual companionship. To live fully in mind he must have intellectual recreations, and must surround himself with all the objects of art and beauty he is capable of using and appreciating. To live fully in soul, man must have love, and love is denied expression by poverty. Man's highest happiness is found in the bestowal of benefits on those he loves, love finds its most natural and spontaneous expression in giving. The man who has nothing to give cannot fill his place as a husband or father, as a citizen, or as a man. It is in the use of material things that man finds full life for his body, develops his mind, and unfolds his soul. It is therefore of supreme importance to him that he should be rich. It is perfectly right that you should desire to be rich, if you are a normal man or woman you cannot help doing so. 
it is perfectly right that you should give your best attention to the science of getting rich, study, you are derelict in your duty to yourself, to God, and to humanity, for you can render God and humanity no greater service than to make the most of yourself. Or it is the noblest and most necessary of all studies. If you neglect this study, you are derelict in your duty to yourself, to God, and to humanity, for you can render God and humanity no greater service than to make the most of yourself. There is a science of getting rich, and it is an exact science, like algebra or arithmetic. There are certain laws which govern the process of acquiring riches, once these laws are learned and obeyed by any man, he will get rich with mathematical certainty. The ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way, those who do things in this certain way, whether on purpose or accidentally, get rich, while those who do not do things in this certain way, no matter how hard they work or how able they are, remain poor. It is a natural law that like causes always produce like effects, and, therefore, any man or woman who learns to do things in this certain way will infallibly get rich. Getting rich is not a matter of environment, for, if it were, all the people in certain neighborhoods would become wealthy, the people of one city would all be rich, while those of other towns would all be poor, or the inhabitants of one state would roll in wealth while those of an adjoining state would be in poverty. But everywhere we see rich and poor living side by side, in the same environment, and often engaged in the same vocations. When two men are in the same locality, and in the same business, and one gets rich while the other remains poor, it shows that getting rich is not, primarily, a matter of environment. Some environments may be more favorable than others, but when two men in the same business are in the same neighborhood, and one gets rich while the other fails, it indicates that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. And further, the ability to do things in this certain way is not due solely to the possession of talent, for many people who have great talent remain poor, while others who have very little talent get rich. Studying the people who have got rich, we find that they are an average lot in all respects, having no greater talents and abilities than other men. It is evident that they do not get rich because they possess talents and abilities that other men have not, but because they happen to do things in a certain way. Getting rich is not the result of saving, or thrift, many very penurious people are poor, while free spenders often get rich. Nor is getting rich due to doing things which others fail to do, for two men in the same business often do almost exactly the same things, and one gets rich while the other remains poor or becomes a bankrupt. From all these things, we must come to the conclusion that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. If getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way, and if like causes always produce like effects, then any man or woman who can do things in that way can become rich, and the whole matter is brought within the domain of exact science. The question arises here, whether this certain way may not be so difficult that only a few may follow it. This cannot be true, as we have seen so far as natural ability is concerned. Talented people get rich, and blockheads get rich, intellectually brilliant people get rich, and very stupid people get rich, physically strong people get rich, and weak and sickly people get rich. Some degree of ability to think and understand is, of course, essential, but in so far as natural ability is concerned, any man or woman who has sense enough to read and understand these words can certainly get rich. Also we have seen that it is not a matter of environment. Location counts for something, one would not go to the heart of the Sahara and expect to do successful business. Getting rich involves the necessity of dealing with men, and of being where there are people to deal with, and if these people are inclined to deal in the way you want to deal, so much the better. But that is about as far as environment goes. If anybody else in your town can get rich, so can you, and if anybody else in your state can get rich, so can you. Again, it is not a matter of choosing some particular business or profession. People get rich in every business, and in every profession, while their next-door neighbors in the same vocation remain in poverty. It is true that you will do best in a business which you like, and which is congenial to you, and if you have certain talents which are well developed, you will do best in a business which calls for the exercise of those talents. Also, 
you will do best in a business which is suited to your locality, an ice cream parlor would do better in a warm climate than in Greenland, and a salmon fishery will succeed better in the northwest than in Florida, where there are no salmon. But, aside from these general limitations, getting rich is not dependent upon your engaging in some particular business, but upon your learning to do things in a certain way. If you are now in business, and anybody else in your locality is getting rich in the same business, while you are not getting rich, it is because you are not doing things in the same way that the other person is doing them. No one is prevented from getting rich by lack of capital. True, as you get capital the increase becomes more easy and rapid, but one who has capital is already rich, and does not need to consider how to become so. No matter how poor you may be, if you begin to do things in the certain way you will begin to get rich, and you will begin to have capital. The getting of capital is a part of the process of getting rich, and it is a part of the result which invariably follows the doing of things in the certain way. You may be the poorest man on the continent, and be deeply in debt, you may have neither friends, influence, nor resources, but if you begin to do things in this way, you must infallibly begin to get rich, for like causes must produce like effects. If you have no capital, you can get capital, if you are in the wrong business, you can get into the right business, if you are in the wrong location, you can go to the right location, and you can do so by beginning in your present business and in your present location to do things in the certain way which causes success. You must get rid of the last vestige of the old idea that there is a deity whose will it is that you should be poor, or whose purposes may be served by keeping you in poverty. The intelligent substance which is all, and in all, and which lives in all and lives in you, is a consciously living substance. Being a consciously living substance, it must have the natural and inherent desire of every living intelligence for increase of life. Every living thing must continually seek for the enlargement of its life because life, in the mere act of living, must increase itself. A seed, dropped into the ground, springs into activity, and in the act of living produces a hundred more seeds, life, by living, multiplies itself. It is forever becoming more, it must do so, if it continues to be at all. Intelligence is under this same necessity for continuous increase. Every thought we think makes it necessary for us to think another thought, Consciousness is continually expanding. Every fact we learn leads us to the learning of another fact, knowledge is continually increasing. Every talent we cultivate brings to the mind the desire to cultivate another talent, we are subject to the urge of life, seeking expression, which ever drives us on to know more, to do more, and to be more. In order to know more, do more, and be more we must have more, we must have things to use, for we learn, and do, and become only by using things. We must get rich, so that we can live more. The desire for riches is simply the capacity for larger life seeking fulfillment, every desire is the effort of an unexpressed possibility to come into action. It is power seeking to manifest which causes desire. That which makes you want more money is the same as that which makes the plant grow, it is life, seeking fuller expression. The one living substance must be subject to this inherent law of all life it is permeated with the desire to live more, that is why it is under the necessity of creating things. The one substance desires to live more in you, hence it wants you to have all the things you can use. It is the desire of God that you should get rich. He wants you to get rich because he can express himself better through you if you have plenty of things to use in giving him expression. He can live more in you if you have unlimited command of the means of life. The universe desires you to have everything you want to have. Nature is friendly to your plans. Everything is naturally for you. Make up your mind that this is true. It is essential, however, that your purpose should harmonize with the purpose that is in all. You must want real life, not mere pleasure or sensual gratification. Life is the performance of function, and the individual really lives only when he performs every function, physical, mental, and spiritual of which he is capable, without excess in any. You do not want to get rich in order to live swinishly, for the gratification of animal desires, that is not life. But the performance of every physical function is a part of life, 
and no one lives completely who denies the impulses of the body a normal and healthful expression. You do not want to get rich solely to enjoy mental pleasures, to get knowledge, to gratify ambition, to outshine others, to be famous. All these are a legitimate part of life, but the man who lives for the pleasures of the intellect alone will only have a partial life, and he will never be satisfied with his lot. You do not want to get rich solely for the good of others, to lose yourself for the salvation of mankind, to experience the joys of philanthropy and sacrifice. The joys of the soul are only a part of life, and they are no better or nobler than any other part. You want to get rich in order that you may eat, drink, and be merry when it is time to do these things, in order that you may surround yourself with beautiful things, see distant lands, feed your mind, and develop your intellect in order that you may love men and do kind things, and be able to play a good part in helping the world to find truth. But remember that extreme altruism is no better and no nobler than extreme. Selfishness, both are mistakes. Get rid of the idea that God wants you to sacrifice yourself for others, and that you can secure his favor by doing so, God requires nothing of the kind. What he wants is that you should make the most of yourself, for yourself, and for others, and you can help others more by making the most of yourself than in any other way. You can make the most of yourself only by getting rich, so it is right and praiseworthy that you should give your first and best thought to the work of acquiring wealth. Remember, however, that the desire of substance is for all, and its movements must be for more life to all, it cannot be made to work for less life to any, because it is equally in all, seeking riches and life. Intelligent substance will make things for you but it will not take things away from someone else and give them to you. You must get rid of the thought of competition. You are to create, not to compete for what is already created. You do not have to take anything away from anyone. You do not have to drive sharp bargains. You do not have to cheat, or to take advantage. You do not need to let any man work for you for less than he earns. You do not have to covet the property of others, or to look at it with wishful eyes. No man has anything of which you cannot have the like, and that without taking what he has away from him. You are to become a creator, not a competitor, you are going to get what you want, but in such a way that when you get it every other man will have more than he has now. I am aware that there are men who get a vast amount of money by proceeding in direct opposition to the statements in the paragraph above, and may add a word of explanation here. Men of the plutocratic type, who become very rich, do so sometimes purely by their extraordinary ability on the plane of competition, and sometimes they unconsciously relate themselves to substance in its great purposes and movements for the general racial upbuilding through industrial evolution. Rockefeller, Carnegie, Morgan, E.T.A.L., have been the unconscious agents of the supreme in the necessary work of systematizing and organizing productive industry, and in the end, their work will contribute immensely toward increased life for all. Their day is nearly over, they have organized production, and will soon be succeeded by the agents of the multitude, who will organize the machinery of distribution. The multimillionaires are like the monster reptiles of the prehistoric eras, they play a necessary part in the evolutionary process, but the same power which produced them will dispose of them. And it is well to bear in mind that they have never been really rich. A record of the private lives of most of this class will show that they have really been the most abject and wretched of the poor. Riches secured on the competitive plane are never satisfactory and permanent, they are yours today, and another's tomorrow. Remember, if you are to become rich in a scientific and certain way, you must rise entirely out of the competitive thought. You must never think for a moment that the supply is limited. Just as soon as you begin to think that all the money is being cornered and controlled by bankers and others, and that you must exert yourself to get laws passed to stop this process, and so on, in that moment you drop into the competitive mind, and your power to cause. Creation is gone for the time being, and what is worse, you will probably arrest the creative movements you have already instituted. Know that there are countless millions of dollars worth of gold in the mountains of the earth, not yet brought to light, and know that if there were not, more would be created from thinking substance to supply your needs. Know that the money you need will come even if it is necessary for a thousand men to be led to the discovery of new gold mines tomorrow. Never look at the visible supply, look always at the limitless riches in formless substance, and know that they are coming to you as fast as you 
can receive and use them. Nobody, by cornering the visible supply, can prevent you from getting what is yours. So never allow yourself to think for an instant that all the best building spots will be taken before you get ready to build your house, unless you hurry. Never worry about the trusts and combines, and get anxious for fear they will soon come to own the whole earth. Never get afraid that you will lose what you want because some other person beats you to it. That cannot possibly happen, you are not seeking anything that is possessed by anybody else, you are causing what you want to be created from formless substance, and the supply is without limits. Stick to the formulated statement. There is a thinking stuff from which all things are made, and which, in its original state, permeates, penetrates, and fills the interspaces of the universe. A thought, in this substance, produces the thing that is imaged by the thought. Man can form things in his thought, and, by impressing his thought upon formless substance, can cause the thing he thinks about to be created.